three, two, one. Thank you, Dalen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, I, the, the can crack had to be in the recording this time. So, yeah. yeah. Your can crack or mine can crack? Because I just opened up a can of pouches. Uh, I cracked a beer and like made sure to hold it up very close to the mic when I did. <laughs> oh, I should go and get a can. Abby, can you grab me a can of tango quickly? No. Oh. If you want to drink, have water. Oh, but just because I've been got, really unhealthy with my... I came prepared. I got beers. I got water. Yeah. If you want to drink, there's water. Right. Are we ready today? Yeah, sure. I'll be ready tomorrow. Ha, 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 ha. I've got plans tomorrow that I can't talk about on the show. He's getting laid. The entire weekend, that's my only thing I'm doing. It's going to be great. Man, man is fantasizing about the amount of pipe he is about to lay. What do you mean, me? She's been texting me all day about it. <laughs> Wait. Drop the kids off at their dad's house and not have to deal with them. It's going to be great. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Proof of Concept After Dark Edition. The we should probably not throw edition. that in the show. <laughs> <laughs> see, I see, don't want to die. See, you say this, I'm but th this is... And their mum just go drink their Capri Suns. <laughs> Approximately three times a week I've been having sex with your mama <laughs> and drinking yeah, your Capri Suns too. I, I <laughs> I'm just waiting to use that line with one of them. Yep. <laughs> how, how much of this do I have to absolutely edit out? <laughs> uh... Just go with how you feel. Just go with how you feel. Hey, the evil thing to do would be to drink the Capri Sun, blow it back up, put it in the fridge. <laughs> <clears throat> or or refill with vodka. No, 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 no. no you drink you drink no. you drink the Capri Suns and you put like a really crap knockoff back in. Like if you drink all their Coke and refill it with roller cola, that's what you gotta do. You know how you oh, know I you win when you drink the whole Capri Sun in one go. <laughs> oh, I love Capri Suns. I, I can't remember the last time I drank a Capri Sun. See, they've got too expensive, so I can't warrant going out and getting Capri Suns unless I'm going to, like, a house party. Bloody yeah, Liv Truss. Liz Truss has caused I'm, all of the, the... I wish they would make adult-sized ones. Like, they can do. we please... They do. Be, like, it's just called a bottle of orange out. juice. No, you they, they, it's not. It's not as orange juice at all. It's... With the screw cap on instead, you can get them in meal deals. But they also do Capri Sun dilutable as well. Do you know what? I've, I've, I've actually had a, a, I've had a flashback to my brother Matthew coming home once with a massive, like... My, my, yeah. my brother came home with a colossal... My my brother came home with a colossal sized bottle of Sunny D the other week, and uh, it was. Oh, it, I fucking love Sunny D. I don't. It's grim. It's it like sick in a bottle. Feel weird. It's oh. horrible. It's horrible. See, it's grim. I drank that much Sunny D as a kid that we had like multiple limited edition Sunny D basketballs, and then my parents found out I... that it wasn't good for us, so I I wasn't allowed Sunny D. Yeah, but... Really, Sunny D. Sunny D isn't good for you, apparently. I wouldn't suspect we that. Derailed before we even introed. <laughs> what, I what happened with Sunny D where they're like, oh yeah, it's not good for your kid. We didn't even make it to the intro before we went off the fucking rails. Alright, okay. I <laughs> Hi. Well, welcome, welcome to Proof of Concept Podcast, the podcast where, for some inexplicable reason, the logo has gone really low quality and uh, the rest of the podcast isn't in the correct format because none of us have got access to Microsoft Word anymore. Don't don't lie to me. You haven't been. You just you keep losing the the uh, logo. So you just get off the <laughs> the worst part. Of this, it's worse and worse every time. The worst part is this is saved on my laptop. I don't know why it's it's gone so low quality, but there we go. Uh, so apologies to anyone. Who, oh, oh dear. Nothing's working. Oh, okay. Ah, no. Ah. We haven't done this in a while. Yeah, you do. How did you find that picture of me? That's just you know, that's just one of your profile photos on Facebook. I, I do not put... I know. I, the, the last one I sent was just a random one you guys told me to send in for the show. I didn't know that you were just going to get them on your own. That's Why what, would I bother sending one in? That's what I generally do now. If I'm putting one of these together last minute, I will just slap on uh, random Facebook photos. I have to go back one for you. Because the thing is, all of Dalen's are mostly him in helmets, so I kind of I give it up and try and get one of him full face. <laughs> However, however, you don't need to know what I look like without a helmet. <laughs> when you take it off, your face is just squished and so, Some say Dalen is Wait. the American Stig. <laughs> yeah, you, if, you if we do a meetup where Dalen shows up, he's going to have to wear a helmet for the entire day. 
<laughs> he actually. We go to a bar. We don't. We go to a bar. I've just got like a silly straw stuck in a beer. Going. Up, 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 up. He actually. He, he flies. <laughs> he flies to the UK, but he has to wear the helmet for the entire flight, and he gets arrested several times at airport security. <laughs> Anyway, so welcome to Proof of Concept. To introduce your hosts, in the top left, in his magical helmet, Dalen, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm here. And Abby, in the top right. Here is that, that's me. I'm also in the bottom right, too. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm you to stay, stay warm. You're actually me, twice. Tyler, you're in the bottom left, if you want to introduce yourself. I have to still. They really do know who I am at this point. <laughs> You'd be surprised. What if this is their first episode, Tyler? You, 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 you're well, turning. Why would a... they start in the middle? Well, I started a lot of my <laughs> podcasts in the middle. I blame. No, uh... you go back to the beginning. Yeah, but if we go back to the beginning, if you don't know who I am. Go back to the first episode that I was a part of. But, but, I don't know what but, it is. But Tyler, that is in the middle. We're that's <laughs> <laughs> we're on like, like our fourth lineup of hosts now. Again, worse turnover rate than your local Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm actually not on the podcast after this. This is my last episode. It gets handed off to someone else. Anyway, no. So uh, welcome to Proof of Concept. This is the po- the, the podcast where we talk about concept cars and one-offs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but we do, however, start most of these now with the news because we we've, we've blatant ripped off uh well there's your problem and uh this week it's it's dalen's news so dalen take it away <laughs> yeah so what had happened was uh ross chastain at martinsville needed two positions to secure a spot in the championship well, like, not even two on. he just needed to finish ahead of denny hamlin's number 11 down there well he was on the last lap and my man's just said fuck it let's see what happens in the uh Pull a Gran Turismo 3 wall ride. And uh, it worked. The, the fucker pulled it off. Picked up four spots. <laughs> thing is, did you hear what he said in the interview it. afterwards? D- in the interview afterwards, he said, oh, well, the only time I've done it before was in NASCAR 2005, the video game. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Not only, not only did this work, though. He just set a record at Martinsville. That is the fastest lap a cup car has ever set at Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> um... There, there's been a lot, if you follow any motorsports page at all, this has been mentioned, and there's been arguments from all sides about whether or not it should be allowed to stand. We've got road racers that don't give a shit about NASCAR, but they're arguing about this. <laughs> I just can think I, it's the only opinion in as a circle track racer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think this is a product of NASCAR's stupid playoff system. He needed that position to advance to the final four. So for the amount of money and stuff that's on the line there, and they're not really being anything against the rule of you sucking so bad you go up against the wall, it, there's nothing they can do about it right now. They would have to have a rule change to stop it. Are they going to stop it? No, because this is what NASCAR wants. They want something that's going to get people's attention and bring interest into the sport. Yeah, but I think you have to. The only to. problem I see with this is when he came hot out of four, I'm pretty sure he trunked the shit out of, was it Kyle Larson? I uh, I saw I saw a video like from a few different angles of it. He got very close to uh, tagging somebody in the side. It looked like, but I don't think he. I don't think there was any car to car contact in this at all. I'm pretty sure he rear-ended. Uh, I think it was Kyle Larson in, into that. Well, I could be wrong, but I thought I saw that he had rear-end. When I saw, it, I thought he got in the back of somebody's bumper on the straightaway. Not in a position it's where a... I really saw it to be overly dangerous for circle track, but to me, this is a really high risk, low reward scenario. And any other race of the season outside of this exact set of circumstances, there's no reason to try it. Yeah, but the thing is, yeah, when you look at NASCAR, a big part of their marketing is having I mean, the big one. There used to be a time know. where at this point in the season, if you didn't have an obvious shot at the championship, you basically phoned it in already because there was no way you're getting into it. But now you just need, like, what, one or two good finishes to, like, get a spot? <laughs> yeah, I think or a win or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, they ruled that there is currently no rule against this. They may look into it before next season, but as of, but as of now... If the finish stands, got the points, it worked. <laughs> Thing is, though, right? I also see, like, I think Joey Logano was suspended and his fourth place finish, I think it was fourth place in this race, was rescinded mm. because he finished with an illegal car underweight. Yeah, that, that also happened. That completely went under the radar? Yeah, yes. As far that, as I, know, very... I didn't see any fines either. I just saw that they took the win away. Which, at the beginning of the season, NASCAR was saying they were going to be really stiff with uh, you not making car rules. On the new cars. I think, uh, I, I can, honestly, if it was, like, up to me, and it was, like, this late in the season, and, like, 
Like, if it was, like, underweight by just a little bit, I probably would have been lenient as it could be. Because, fuck it. Because you can't just fuck that up by accident and come on underweight if you do your math wrong. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, at this level, the math that goes into making sure that car finishes at weight, uh, you know, the guy that does that gets paid a lot of money a year to make sure that car will pass post-race tech. I, uh, I, might, have a story, I might have a story to tell you about a uh, car not making weight at a race. But it's one of those I probably shouldn't record publicly. So I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Dalen's on the illegal chat again. Uh, no, it's just certain things I don't think people need to be have things spread. It's like they know they did it. It got dealt with. There's no need to talk about it again publicly. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, the thing is with this though, right? Well, this is this has gotten even people over here who don't care about NASCAR, talking about NASCAR. So I can see why something like this to NASCAR Yeah, is. I've seen this in like all the Grid Life groups is how I found out about it, because I don't follow NASCAR anymore. I mean, th- but sure this, I was this was this pass to everybody when I got back in town Monday and saw it. Yeah, you did send it to me, but I didn't actually watch the thing you sent me until like the next day I'd already seen a post about it. You didn't send it to me. Sorry, I didn't think you were interested in NASCAR. I'm interested in dumb person driving up a wall. That's great. <laughs> that's, that's, that's... I, I wouldn't say it's dumb because the man's made a calculated risk and it fucking worked. Well, the thing is, haven't people <laughs> tried like this before? I inner cool wiki here and sent it. H- haven't people tried this before as well, and every time they've tried it, they've just completely just... like binned the car? Y- yeah, you make a good point there. Um... People have been saying this is an Earnhardt move. No, I, I, I think Earnhardt probably would have just wrecked somebody for the fun of it at this point. Um, Kowicki, though, might have done the... Yeah, Kowicki might have done the math here. I'm like, that's just stupid enough to work, and then try it. Um, again, uh, th- th- this is so high-risk, low-reward in just about every situation, and I'm willing to bet that if you did this again, you weren't going to see the same output. You had... To think um, how hard you were in the throttle, he was buried in that throttle, but how much drag are you getting by the angle? Are you flat up against that wall, or are you angled into that wall? Will the wall catch the car? If it catches um, part of the tubing, it's just going to stop the car and rip it around. Because this well, it's not a smooth wall, is it? It's kind of like a 50 pence piece, but it's, it's well, effectively uh, starting okay, to drag. A lot of it? people I've seen arguing about NASCAR's response to this come from different uh, organizations, and so a lot of them are saying, it's like, isn't the wall not inside track limits? Like, haven't you technically gone off track if you hit the wall? I think that's how every other organization considers the situation. If you were on a road course, I'd say yes. But on NASCAR, you're going to get any type of circle track racing like that. It's not uncommon on asphalt to get right up on the wall. You are in bounds until you hit that. There is no yellow line up there to say you're out here. Now, we have hard lines on the inside of the track to tell you when you've cut out. But I don't think we've ever assumed that we needed to worry about telling you that you don't want to normally touch the wall. I mean, if you look at the in front of the car there, you can see someone has already touched the wall beforehand. It's not like it's an uncommon well, you, thing. Okay, okay, yeah, you're going to have, like, minor bumps and shit on it, but... Oh, yeah, I've, I've scraped the stickers off the side of my car several times on a straightaway. Which, in which case, yeah, if, if you make the argument well, that the wall is out of bounds... You're talking about drag there. I've heard people talk about this, like, with, like, the Honda Fit, to, like, the GLTC car, or not GLTC, but, like, the Sunday Cup cars. A lot of, like, I remember a, uh, one of the drivers saying, uh, somebody told him, like, the front straight at Road America, long as hell, in that fit with 12 horsepower, you need to be as close to the wall as you can get, because you're theoretically less drag that way. Well, again, though, if you start saying that this is illegal, at what point you have to say, well, anyone who's used traded paint with the wall, is, it's illegal, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I... They're also, y- you can tell the way he was stuck to that wall, he wasn't trying to come unstuck. No. No, but again, it's the technical. It was an obvious move. Yeah, but it's the level of technicality. Because if you ban this, do you then have to say, well, anyone else who touches the wall is is banned? It's it's one of those things where I think it, you're going to have such a, a little chance of this happening. Because let's be honest, this is a a dumb move that you know would. Uh, this is clearly a last corner move. No matter where you're at, you're not hmm. going to do this in the middle of the race. No. Yeah, because that the I'm pretty sure the car did take some damage front that front right corner. I think. So it probably wouldn't have gone straight after this, I imagine. I mean, it's not designed to rub up against a no. wall, because this is the thing I do in Forza when I'm losing. But I, I can't help but feel that there would be literally no point to playing a rule against this, because it would be more of a headache than the worth of it for the one guy who's been willing to do this in, what, all of NASCAR history that's actually done this and uh, done it successfully? I think the last attempt was actually last year. Oh, never mind, I'll take it back. <laughs> Well, I was gonna say, that you don't know about it tells you how successful it was. Exactly. Well, that's, yeah. that's going to say. I, I did not know about this until I was reading an article that said that, uh, last year and then I think 2008. 
Someone tried it at Darlington. <laughs> like I said, to my knowledge, other people have tried it, like, but it's never it's come off. It's a bad off. idea, but it's not the best. <laughs> there, okay, you're going a lot fucking faster at Darlington. <laughs> So it's if it goes wrong, it's gonna go way wrong. Go, oh yeah, I, I think Martinsville is one of the few places you could get away with that. But again, this this is I one of those things. Is a lot of places where this will work. I wonder where, given how yeah, how like every, every track is Bowman Gray, so there's like. But yeah, given, given how if you're how Bowman Gray, you're done for the night. Given given how how few times this has actually worked successfully, <laughs> is there any point to trying to make a rule about it? I feel like it would be ha lots of hassle because again. At what stage, if you say, well, someone's touched the wall, does that count? Uh, someone's, you know, scraped it just trying to get that aerodynamic benefit. At what point do you have to say, well, no, that you, you have to have so much well, of the car touching the wall, or... seems to generally not give a shit unless it makes them look bad, or um, somebody protests. Exactly, so I, I, I kind of feel... Then even you know, if somebody protests, they only maybe kind of still care if it makes them look bad. <laughs> mm, I don't know, I, I feel like if you're looking at this, you should just kind of go, oh, that was a dumb thing, that's going to go hilariously on the news, we'll... we'll... NASCAR has definitely done some questionable rulings that don't always follow the same precedent. Yeah. What the mood they're in with the media response. I know that because I really love Slap Shoes and Slap Shoes has done a few documentaries on that. Also, a uh, recommendation to anyone watching this, go watch Slap Shoes. Man's great. Especially if you have no interest in NASCAR. You, I, mm. I think a lot of people will appreciate it a lot more after watching some of his stuff. Well, Slap Shoes actually I, uh, is one of these... NASCAR and F1, to me, both have incredibly interesting histories but I have no interest in watching them presently. I like watching NASCAR races up to about 2009. Um, since then, I have made multiple attempts to give a shit and it hasn't stuck. But I love watching old races, though. Old racing. Let's just bring it back to how it used to be and I'd be in. And I also like... The, the one race that really got my attention recently is the Bristol Dirt Race. Bring back dirt to NASCAR. I, I know that we're doing road courses. I want to see oval, but I want to see dirt back. I, I also, if we're doing random new shit, uh, I want to see na uh, cup cars do Nashville GP. I would I would go to that. Not just because it's a few minutes away, but I would go to that. I, I still want to go see NASCAR, but I want to watch it in the flesh so I can have the V8 noises pumped into my soul. But anyway, so that is the news for, for there this. There is a pretty good facility pretty close to us at Nashville Super Speedway. And I think the RK, they, they do have cup races on the schedule now in Nashville. I now need to get another job so or I can come out to, to Bristol. Nashville. Bristol's only a couple hours from my house. I think it's like three hours away. Yeah, we did remember to realize that Tennessee is not a bad place to be if you like racing because no, it's I, not quite as good as Indy. But there's still, if you expand your reach just a little bit, there's quite a bit there. Abby, Abby, can, can you imagine if it wasn't our Bristol? That would be hilarious, uh, just because most it of it be is. very hilly. Yeah, 90 degrees up the hill. Hey, can you imagine doing it in Birmingham? Just just flat out doing NASCAR in the bull ring. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, my I mean, dad would try that one, whilst like, going to Sodium, but, you know. <laughs> Got very stuck in a, a Christmas market in Bristol with my dad, and he was very angry and driving a little bit too fast. But it's fine, it's fine. Um, given um, Tyler has time constraints for reasons, should we move on to the topic of the day? Yeah, sure, why not? So, uh, this episode is episode 14, The Big Beefy Boy. Uh, is it 14 or 13? Oh, it's 15. It is. Oh dear, we got it wrong. Oh, wait. I got that wrong. Wait, no, the... Oh, fuck, never mind, never mind. I forgot because the safety episode was 13. Yes. Yeah. Whoops. So it should actually be 15. That is a me. I, I uh, recommend... Okay, do you, do you have the thing where you can roll on the slide? Uh. Can, can we just scribble that out the four and put a five in real quick? If we move on, they won't look at it. They'll never notice we did this. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> Anyway, so... I could edit it I, now I and give you the wrong Nah, one. nah. So uh, no, I, I just want, I wanted to see someone manually on screen correct that number. And they didn't know. Thank, right. Thanks, Dalen. You've added on extra things we to do in editing now. I hate you. No, you could have done it just like just while you're recording. I don't have that out, ability. I, 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 I can fling my cursor around. That's about it. Anyway, so episode 15 or 14A, perhaps. Um, it's the big beefy boy. We're going to be talking about big engines. This <laughs> episode 14, CA1. <laughs> we're, we're talking about uh, big engines in this one. Uh, concepts or perhaps you know one-offs that had 
ludicrously large engines uh, in some sort of way. So uh, up first we have, oh, we have you, Tyler, if you want to crack on with this. Uh, this is the 2003 Cadillac 16. I have a Hot Wheels so, of this. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone has at some point seen, played with, driven this car. It's it's pretty impressive. So this was launched at the 2003 Detroit Auto Show, and this served as the Halo model for Cadillac. This was meant to be a concept to show what Cadillac can do, and it's rather unfortunate they never ended up building this car. But uh, what they did is uh, Bob Lutz, who was the GM of uh, them at that point, or the, sorry, the vice president of GM at that point, had a design competition, and this is the car that ended up being selected to be Cadillac's flagship. So this has a completely custom fabricated aluminum chassis built specifically for this car. This is not based on any GM platform. GM threw everything out and made this car just to be the best that they could do. Oh, so it's not even based so, on a Corvette or anything like that. It is just flat out. No, this thing. is a hundred percent one off. I mean, even components like the transmission, which is a four L eighty five, it was a highly modified four L eighty five E. It's got twenty four inch wheels that were one off. The roof is all glass. Mm. The Cadillac badge on the steering wheel is solid crystal. Oh. That's a Bulgari clock in the center console. That is hand-stitched Tuscany leather, all walnut trim, real walnut trim. That's uh, hand-woven silk carpet in the car. Oh. No, nothing was spared on this car. Cadillac went all out. And uh, back in 03, this thing actually was on Top Gear, and James May said it's exactly what a Cadillac should be. Mm. And but even Carson to be was that praising person. this. Uh, it does scream you know when you see people that have got all the money in the world and they look badly dressed or you know their house is just gaudy it looks like that like you've got all of these top materials this is 100% a hundred percent of cadillac i can see gary Busey driving it's, it's just a bit naff oh no i it's... disagree i think this is real sleek I, I like it a lot um the front end could be just a bit but uh, this is kind of like if if you really want a phantom, mm. but you got a little, little bit more spice to you, you want it like you don't want to be a little more off to the side here. You, you enjoy your smoking alcohol a bit more than the normal Rolls Royce guy. So, <laughs> so. You know, one of my favorite features, and unfortunately, I did I put the wrong photo in for this because you you got the, the inbuilt progress thing. The rear of it, the lights and the exhaust tips line up, and that's one of my favourite little details. And uh, I'll have to, hey, Alex and editing, add it in when we put in the what you call it on top. Anyway, that is, I think, yeah. it's full of such really lovely little details. Like this whole design, I think it's, it's really lovely. So to the big part of this, though, that engine in there is a one-off build. It is a Gen Four based LS. That is 13.6 liters, 32 valve V16. So it's a thousand horsepower and a thousand foot pounds of torque. Is that just and two LSs stuck together? Yes and no. It is one piece heads and yes, it's a they, solid block. Made, that is a one off build. It's just based it, off LS parts. It uses LS internals and all that. Ooh. That's still one off, like, one block there because. Uh, one off set of heads, one off set of crank, or one off crank, one off block. One of cam, but you know pistons, rods, valve train components, timing components, all of that is based off there. Which the pretty much all the stuff you would need eight to sixteen of on the uh, LS, you now need sixteen to thirty-two of those. So here's the even crazier part, though, that GM took the effort. This is actually a uh, displacement on demand engine. Oh, so it's like a it's it's a cylinder deactivation. On demand. It's a cylinder deactivation so, then. Yes, when you're cruising around at low speeds, it's running on four cylinders. Oh, when wow. you're driving and accelerating, most of the time it's running on eight cylinders. When you floor it, all 16 say hello. Uh, those I, um, those lifters still have me a bit salty, so uh, no. Well, <laughs> with that, though, it was averaging 16.6 on their normal drives and achieving about 20 miles to the gallon for the highway from a 1,000-horse V16. 1,000 horsepower? three. That's yeah. Thousand horsepower, thousand foot pounds of torque from a naturally aspirated V16. That's very impressive, actually. So, mm. I, I really do think it's a shame Cadillac didn't build this. I know they wouldn't have sold a lot. Mm. You know, it's the, obviously their flagship car, but it would have been nice to see a, a few hundred of them. Oh, well, I'm surprised they didn't. I mean, I guess you could say the XLR is the sort of inspired. Fifteen-cylinder have displacement on demand. Why would they have not? 
just built the damn thing. Mm. Then again, it's hard to... I mean, if you go way back, sort of pre-war, you do get massive engines that sort of, um, you know, lengthened. Well, this is made to pay homage to the 1930s Cadillac V16. Mm. So I, I, I can see why maybe having a V16 wouldn't have made any sense in a modern setting. But it is odd that they never... Because the, the design was obviously very, very captivating at the time. It, it's, it's surprising that they never bothered doing anything. I mean, again, like I said, the XLR, I guess, is sort of this sort of thing. Not really, not at all. Uh, the XLR... Corvette-based. I know, the but XLR it's this sort of look. Huge and spacious. This is... This would have been a very big car. Like, this has a uh, 140-inch wheelbase, for, re for reference. I, okay. Crew cab long bed is a 160-inch wheelbase. I, I mean uh, in terms of the, the actual design the cues. Those are 24s, if you need to remember the scale of this thing. <laughs> yeah, this car is massive. It weighs like 5,005 pounds in its driving configuration. Which mm. I'm at the shock it's that light, but everything on this is aluminum. I was going to say, yeah. Um, there's some features you can tell made it to other Cadillac models. But then you look at that tail, and all I'm seeing is about 1974 El Dorado. Uh, I don't see that as a bad thing. thing. That, that they pulled a lot of design cues from their history throughout this car. Mm. And I love it. That whole tail section is definitely just 70s El Dorado. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Do, you, do we know what's, what is going on with this now? Does it, now see, I'm assuming it still exists somewhere. It does. Um, I believe it's still in GM's collection. Yeah. But I know it's popped up at events from time to time since then. I wonder if it would be a pain, because I mean, obviously it's got the flip up side bonnet thing, which looks cool, but I imagine is incredibly impractical. I wonder how difficult it is to actually work on that engine. Well, if it's like any car from the actual era, you take the hoods off and then the center post where the hinge on comes out, and then you just have a completely open engine bay. Oh, okay, well that's not so bad. Actually, if you go back to like old cars from the 30s, you can fold both sides of the hoods up and usually just lift them off the car. I, I wouldn't want to try it with one that size. That is vacuously large. They're not that heavy, though. I mean, that is all fairly light. Yeah, but thing. they are still an inconvenient size. An entire zip code, yeah. Mm. Like, it's it's not a case of it being heavy. It's just more unwieldy. The the dealership has a probably a roof-hanging rig to come off the ceiling and just, just kind of pick up the, the hood and hang it while you're working on the car. Like a, like a Jeep roof rig. Is it? Yeah, I think what would actually happen is you'd see me in the back of the dealership with a painter's pole wedging it open as a customer has a heart attack when they come back to get something out of their car. <laughs> I, I do wonder, because obviously GM was doing quite well in 2003, wasn't it? This is before 2008 banker crash, we realized, oh, actually nothing works and everything's bad at it now. 03 would have been, the H2 had just debuted in 03. Um, they were... What else was new in 03? Cadillac had just started making some new cars. So at this time, the big push for this car is Cadillac realized that late 90s, going into the early 2000s, they are selling cars to a dying market. Mm. And younger people really had no interest. I mean, the Escalade started in 99, so they were starting to get a little bit of push on the SUV side. But Cadillac really needed something to go for a different market. Mm. You mean to tell me that people with a bit of money in their 20s in 1999... Did not want a sedan Deville. <laughs> I would have, but I guess regular people don't. Which that used to be cool up until about probably the eighties, but then you get into it's basically a really expensive W body. <laughs> I think this is the big problem Cadillac had for a very long time: is you you're trying to convince people, you know, what is clearly a it's rebad Chevy. Yeah, it's not your grandpa's car, but also this is not a rebad Chevy. This is still a luxury product. Because a lot of the time, you know, it kind of just... Well, I mean, again, the XLR was... Oh, it's a Corvette, but actually... A Corvette with the North Star. Yeah, but it's a fancy engine. Look, it's not an LS. It's a fancy um, engine. It doesn't work as well as the LS. That, but... Okay, the, the, the STS-V and the XLR would have been so much better if they just threw an LS in there. Because, mm. <laughs> again, that's another weird one. Is that they went from this Those luxury are, brand, yeah, but it has now... Mm. Okay, if the STS-V had gotten the LSA, that would have been a definite dream car for me. Just... Yeah, it, I mean, they're not bad. I've driven them. They're kind of fun, but I don't know. Boost doesn't help North Star problems. Just put, yeah. 
Spicy LS Swap SDSV could be fun to have it something happen someday. I mean, I want to point out they built this with effectively two LSs. You know, they, they, they didn't do use two North Stars. I don't know if the North Star existed this time, and therefore I'm making a null point, but still. Oh, yeah, definitely did. See, well, they, they clearly yeah. went, well, you know what's a good engine? The LS. Yeah, the, the North Star barely predates the LS by like a couple years there. <laughs> so, uh, clearly they knew from this one alone that the LS was the one to go. I don't know. Again, it's that. The... I think it would have been cool last time the GM built a V16. It actually just had four heads on it. But again, yeah, those I, are fun. I like working on those. I do have to wonder what the point of the big engine in this was. I feel like it was just a showstopper. Look how much you know we can put into this car. Because when Cadillac first became cool, you had you had the V16s with like the pipes coming out of the hood and running down the. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, I get the that. This V16 but... is just to pay homage to their 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 Halo car from the 30s, the best thing you could buy from Cadillac. I guess. All right, I'll, I'll give it that. Also, I just realized they've given it two sets of dials depending on which stage. That I would, if you look at the um, the original molding, it's got a regular Chevy dash from what I can gather, which is interesting compared to the um, frankly beautiful looking interior on the actual finished product. But it is. Um... Yeah, that was very much early test car which again this car was 100 percent functional in every way mm. it did have a 40 mile an hour speed limit put on it when anyone was allowed to test drive it and stuff because gm was a bit concerned that it was all one off really bad press if you kill a journalist yeah um, plus this was at the time the where journos were just writing cars off constantly uh, okay i might google this the uh the valve covers on the new 16 are like the same ones they had on the car on the one from the 30s Okay, that's cool. Yeah, a lot. Like I said, they they as many places as they could took cues oh. from older Cadillacs and brought them into this car. Also, the exhaust manifolds on this thing are actually no. I I didn't realize they actually built a long tube eight eight primary header for this thing. Yeah, if you I sent a bunch of pictures to Alex, so I didn't know which ones that they were going to use for the show. But I'm dropping a picture of there's the, a lot, the That's a... There's a lot of detail used on this car. Oh, yeah. Other things, I had to try and get those a general are, just of it. I can only fit like four. Decent long tube headers. Like, there's actually... It looks like there's two collectors going into that. I can't... Uh... Oh, wow. That's that's actually quite that, complex. Don't want to be the guy that built those headers. That guy was there a while. Hey, Alex, <laughs> editing. Please remember to put the photo in. I am really, really adding extra effort into this. This is... Uh... We're, we're trying today, guys. We're trying. How, how are we going to rate these ones this week? Because, you know, we, have we got to rate them on engine ridiculousness? On, on... I don't know. I don't quite get it. I mean, I don't know how we're going to rate it, because I'm also in the running as well, so I'm not, you know, totally well, well, unbiased. No, the, the only reason we, we let you rate them on your own, usually, is because you keep forgetting to submit ones in, because you're usually at my house and don't have your stuff with you to record. Oh. So. Or we could do it where we all score that, it. That is what that is what we're going to do. Score. That's what we're going why to don't do. We, why don't we take the displacement in liters, add it to the horsepower and torque, and divide it by three? Well, no, because then we're, this is no. I'm not going to win that. Do that. No, I'm not going to win that. Thing. Wait a minute. This was also an old GM. This was also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, this is as I, old as I, my I, cars. I hate to break it to everyone, but I feel like I may win that one. No, no. I think you'll win on displacement. I don't think you'll win on power. <laughs> So I know, oh, no. I know what one you you have. Yeah. I, I, yeah, okay. I say we we've got to rate it on on engine ridiculousness because I think the whole point of massive engines is they are a bit mad, and I and I kind of in, uh, enjoy that. So okay. should we should we go engine ridiculousness? Yeah, sure. Even though I'm definitely gonna lose that one. Fuck. <laughs> I I might have one. Uh, um, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna say out of ridiculousness. This has got to be a full like eight. I mean, you've that is a hell of a lot of complexity just to make a reference to a car from the 30s. Uh, the fact that they made working displacement on demand on this thing is what blows me away the most. Because that building a one-off engine like this is one thing. Making it have displacement on demand across 16 cylinders. Actually, I just realized by 03, they had not done that on the LS in main production yet. No. This would have been the test bed for that then. Yeah. They're not pulling parts just to do this. This is, they designed no, it. This is where they made it, that system that's on that blown up Yukon in the front yard. 
as all Yukons are. Which this is this is a Gen Four engine. It's Gen Four architecture based, but this is like where a lot of parts for Gen Four started, because or got good. I mean, yeah. Would this have wait a minute? Two thousand three. I wonder if this were those were Cathedral Porter Square Port hits. It's O three still. So O three, the main production was still Gen three. Yeah, but we're only two years out from the launch of the C six at this point. I wonder then if the the big part of the cylinder deactivation review is a part of testing for things like the C six. I mean, a lot of concepts like this are, hey, I look mean, look at the things we could do. Well, yeah, that only came on trucks. That did not come on. Uh... It also had active fuel management, but... But it is something you can get on the Corvette, isn't it? Or is that only the C7? The, is that the no, C7? no, Corvettes don't do cylinder deactivation. They oh. skip shift on the manuals. Uh, the cylinder deactivation was a truck thing. Truck oh. Tahoe. Automatic Camaros got it too. I was going to say, I know the, oh, Cam- uh, the Camaros do it, and I know the yep, SS did it as well. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I the Corvettes see. do not do that. Hmm. I'm pretty sure Automatic Camaros did, they, did get the cylinder deactivation. I thought the 5.3s the were the only engines that got it. No, apparently there are some activation 6.2s and 6.0s. Oh, God. Anyway, let's get some scores on the doors. Hey, I've given this an 8. 6.2s six six definitely got it, though. The uh, the hybrid Tahoes were some... Weren't those some activation 6.2s? The hybrid Tahoes, at least the first gens, were 6-liter uh, LSs. Yeah. They're, they're truck-drive motors with a different camshaft. Anyway... Um, I, I give it a nine. I don't know what's coming, but I think a V sixteen that was one off built is insane. That is definitely it. yeah. That is pretty good. Dalen, what's your score? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I love that engine. I, I definitely would love to see that in a C six chassis stretched with like some kind of open wheel body, like a prowler. Actually, Corvette prowler with that or base prowler with that engine would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... The engine for Leroy three point oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thing is, though, with an engine like that, you can't put that in anything sporty. It's got to be something just. No, no, no. It, that that engine would probably still still fuck. Like that that's still a party motor if you work to do it right. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's a long engine. If you move it behind the driver. Yeah, it's but the, it's again. it's still a long engine. I mean, the You've the Bugatti Veyron has a W sixteen for a reason, not a V sixteen. Imagine what it's gonna be like if we throw twelve pounds at it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying 1,000 horsepower, but the air inlet is uh, between you and the passenger in the cockpit. That would that yeah. would sound amazing, in fairness. Anyway, Abby, give us a score. Engine ridiculousness out of 10. Seven. Seven. See, I'm bringing this around a topic. Look at this. I'm, I'm, I'm being a showrunner today. And Dalen. Wow. You are yet to give me a score, Dalen. Uh, about an eight. An eight. Which gives us a grand score of me doing some maths. Uh, oh right, I forgot. It's supposed to be decimals. Oh, don't you dare! It's too late now. <laughs> thirty-two. <laughs> ha! It's too late now. I, I beat you. You got a score of thirty-two, which means uh, for now you're on podium. I just gotta beat one person, and I make my goal. <laughs> this is this is the one. My favorite thing in editing all of these is hearing the joy in Tyler's voice when he realizes he's on podium. It, 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 I've never heard anything like it. It, it is the purest, most genuine form of joy you can possibly experience as a person i don't need to win i just gotta be top three every time i'm on that winner's podium you happen to see me i just noticed they painted the inner fenders on that thing they painted the inner fenders yeah. but they didn't paint the engine bay which i find bizarre i don't know that that raw oh, aluminum looks that yeah aluminum looks really good it does yeah. but it is a bit weird so it, it, it's like my uh a certain yellow car where you open up anything you and you contrast. see silver. You need to. You don't need like everything the same color. You need to see. That's why you've got like the polished headers. The, the, the whole the point, point of this car is it was. This yeah. is handcrafted. Everything on this car is handcrafted. And if they were to go to production, these would still be hand woven carpets and hand stitched. I, I will say that's going to be a seven figure car. Like in production, that's a seven figure car. What I will say is, it's the, the sort of, yeah. that went into that money. You it, paid. It's the sort of thing you get now with carbon fiber, where you know we, we, that is something that we still do with supercars, where you, you have the hand woven carbon fiber and you, and you stick it out there. It does actually remind me a lot of Rolls Royce, because I mean, obviously, uh, Dylan made the joke earlier about it being like a Phantom, but I mean, you look at the wheels; they're very Rolls Royce looking. And mm. if you ever look at this a Rolls Royce, shooting for taking those down, giving an option against those when. The original 16 
that car in the 30s was on the same level of like craftsmanship as a Rolls from the same period. It was, that was not, they did not care about the car. That car was, I have fuck you money, I want something nice. <laughs> and that's exactly what this says to me. So I... That's a market Cadillac fell far away from, and yeah. they were trying to get back to it with this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit weird that they never did, because you'd think that's the sort of thing, especially now, that would be very beneficial, but... Uh, unfortunately, I would, well, now, would go back to that. Cadillac could sell this car tomorrow, and I would try to figure out a way to buy it. I think they could sell it as it is tomorrow, and I mean, it, it 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 looks a lot like. I would like a better revision of the front bumper. I don't like that. Yeah, as, I think I could have possibly um, agreed to that. I can definitely see that is the Escalade. Lay down, give them a little curve, maybe a little more grill, a little less grill in some areas. I think the blank the blank space between the grill and the headlight, I think, is what bugs me. Mm. Pull it out there, but maybe shorten it up a little bit on its height, and then maybe or, give the bottom or, of the bumper some more definition. Give it a bit of a dip in the hood, where it, where it, where you get where you start getting a little bit of the separate fender and hood thing a little bit, just a little bit of a subtle hint at it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, lady and gentlemen. Alex, in post, can you Microsoft paint the front end of this to look like what we just said? <clears throat> If you do, they would have been no. They're going to, they're hitting the 30s cars. No. So, uh, so now, now you get that little dip, little, that little bit of, like, little, not, not a very deep, deep, but just a bit of a valley. Like, in the little I headlight gap. already painted the fenders there. Just cut the hood so it notches around them a little. I, I'm now going to pass on to the next thing, so you don't try, try and make me do things in editing again. Because the last <laughs> time you did that, Tyler, it took me ages to figure out. <laughs> so, That's what I'm here for. Taylor... Anyway, it's me and See, you well, one in person. Yeah, I, okay. forgot, I forgot what you did. This is uh, nineteen. Uh, what year did they actually finally get this thing out? Where, where did my notes go? It's an early bumper, so it says nineteen ninety five in the background of that photo. But... Anyway, anyway, in nineteen eighty six, GM's Arizona Proving Ground project coordinator Scott Leon decided he wanted to see big block power return to the Corvette. We had the new C4 chassis by this point. We're actually kind of figuring out how math works on the chassis and making it start to become a modern sports car. However, we still want giant V8, damn it. <laughs> I'm really confused why they did it on a convertible chassis and made an FRC, though. Anyway, so in 1986, he, he took a, le a leftover 84 test mule and test fitted just kind of a mock-up, a 454 big block truck engine. He found it was a pretty tight fit, but the car only required slight slight uh, alterations to the floor pan and the right side of the frame rail to fit. Sorry, what what size? So what displacement was this again? Sorry, seven point four liters. Hmm. Okay. Continue. <laughs> so he showed this mock up to GM higher ups and got the green light to build two more prototypes. He got a nineteen eighty six coupe with an automatic transmission and an eighty eight Z fifty Z fifty one convertible with a ZF six transmission. The 88 ZF1 car was shown here. It was built with the goal of proving the car could actually be be built at a reasonable cost. So they used a 454 short block from the Marine Division, used then did a better top end on it, used the same EFI setup from the L98, the two port injection. Custom had all the front accessories on it, including like all the AC alternator power steering, all of that worked on this prototype. Nice. There was two reasons for the convertible. One of them was that's the car they had left over to build off of. And two, they kind of wanted to stress test the convertible chassis. I can see that. because That was one goal for them. Um, best I can tell, there was multiple prototypes cor they built for Corvettes that were literally just, just uh, we're trying to break the convertible chassis with the engine, was literally the whole goal of the project. There was a few of those. For reference to people, the C4 Corvette convertibles were not done by GM. They were done later. Yeah, by a like third party. Most mm -hmm. convertibles at the time were, in fairness. That's a very common thing. And even now, uh, I, I covered this so, before on the channel with the convertible review. So, yeah, the car pictured here is an 88 Z51 convertible. And what they've done is they've removed the, the convertible, like toppings, and all the soft tops gone. And they just solid mounted the hardtop onto the car, making the first fixed groove coupe. 
Uh, you would later see this kind of treatment with the uh, C5 fixture of Coop and Z06s, and also my Miata. <laughs> um, you, you won't you won't see that on my MR2 because I can't afford a hard top for my MR2. Uh, who's that be the next crowdfunding thing? Because I want to see an FRC in your car. <laughs> so yeah, that's um. So do I, Tyler. Yes, so do I. Basically, there there wasn't a lot special about the car. Like all the interior, everything worked. This car, I believe, is currently in Bowling Green. I think. Did it fall it into the, the hole? I was there. Did it um, fall in the hole? No, that was not one of the cars. No, this one, this one, this it was in the room that fell into the hole, but it, it survived. Yay! Um, same. If I remember right, this isn't very far from the '83. Uh, yeah. So I we may have moved it around. I think I think they've changed it a bit since last time I was there. Yeah, mostly because a lot of it went in the hole. Since the I know. R.I.P. and peace, mallet hammer. But yeah, this would have been. They did they ever dine of this one. But they estimated this made the same 385 horse as the dual red cam LT5 ZR1. Is that it? With more torque. 385. <laughs> I mean, I, okay, I guess it's a truck engine, but 385. Well, for, for reference, I mean, it was what, 330 horse for the LT1 in the early 90s ones? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I think we hit 350 on the 96 car before we went to the, the C5 and 97. This was, okay, this, like I said, this was the, L, the dual red cam LT5 uh, ZR1 motor. That was 385 horsepower. One of the goals of Scott Leon was seeing if we could get that power for cheaper. And big fucking truck motor is easier to get that power with than the little dual red cam Lotus motor. Which it ultimately is what killed this project off and why we never saw production with it, even though they were like, they had it there. ZR1 was, I'm not sure ZR1 was out yet, but it was like very far. 89 enough. I know there was. So... Basically, GM bought a lot of Lotus and then to actually do the design work for that engine. And they also sent cars to Lotus to get the chassis set up. Um, and then they also like had all these... Uh, basically, a lot of money and resources had gone into the ZR1 program. So, basically what killed the ZR2 was that this would have been in competition with the ZR1. Mm. And they're not gonna waste. They're not gonna waste all that money they just spent on the ZR1, just to undermine it with this. So this basically get, just got used as a test mule, and that was the end of it. I feel like though, if they would have gone to production with this, the prospect of reasonably priced, I would assume, compared to the actual ZR1 for the ZR2, but big block stick C4 would kind of take I'm, C4s from like my, right now they're fun, I'm but they're guessing. always kind of beaters. I'm guessing this just would have been a. I don't know if this would have been a special model. This might have just been like a couple, couple three grand option on top of the Z51 car. Yeah, like it, it, just like you get like the the handling package cars. The, yeah, it, if that was an option on these, like I mean, especially on the early Gen C4s, like the the pre facelift cars like these. And I imagine if they went if they went to production, they would have, they probably would have had the bulk of these as coupes if they went to production with them. I tell you what, yeah, this, this does remind perfect. me of though is if you look at the E36 M3. Um, when they brought that to Canada, they had the US spec M3 and the Euro spec M3. Now, obviously, the Euro spec is a bit more powerful and what have you, but it's so much more complex and so much more expensive that I think they sold something like 30 total in Canada, whereas the regular M3 that you guys had over there, they sold really well. Yeah, okay, so Europe got, it was an actual S engine, like, so really fancy, spicy M motor in those cars. The North American cars got the M54 B30, which was basically just the 3 liter they were already putting in, like, the 530Is. They put it in the M3 with, like, a little bit, like, a different camshaft, right? Mm. But it, as a result, it was a lot <laughs> more reliable. Stuff too, I believe. It was a lot yeah. more reliable than the standard M3, but a lot cheaper. Uh, also, uh, it's I've seen some people review both cars side by side. The the S engine makes more power, but you have to rev the balls off of it to get all of it. While the M engine in the North American cars has a nice fat mid range that he the this reviewer said actually drives a lot better than the S car. Well, I, if you ever watch the Hagrid because you have almost as much power, but you also have it over a much wider area. <laughs> if you watch the Haggerty review on it, that they they sort of talk about both back to back, and again you are saying how effectively it's they've done what they've done here, where you've put instead of the really complex expensive engine you put the dumb big one in uh you know fairly simple and it, it does the job just as well near enough and it doesn't help to justify that 
a massive added, added expense to buy the more expensive one again this is what kind of killed it off in canada uh, if this was like 385 horsepower this i'm guessing this would have been 390 to 410 foot pound torque and you would have it probably would have revved to about 6,000 6,500 and then you just had all of your torque from like just a little bit above idle to red line mm. <laughs> you also pointed out this is a marine short block from the like marine division right yeah so everything that bottom end is designed with the sole purpose of going from idle to wide open throttle and staying there for hours on end. Mm-hmm. In a boat, this thing is made to spin like five or six thousand RPM continuously. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a great short block. Like this thing is God damn it, GM, quit fucking it up was, on the good one. It was a bit it, this was a bit heavier. Actually I think this was actually pretty close in weight to the ZR one because the, the ZR one was aluminum block, this was an iron block, big block. But it's less parts there, and then all the top end was still limited. So, so I think it probably would have been closer to weight than the zero one. What, what, oh, I kind of can't give this a big score because I'm looking at this, and this seems I, to me it seems more dumb that they didn't make it than the fact they did. I, yeah, I get why. But... I don't know. Part of me wants to give him a ten just because I I think that this was a huge mistake by GM not to build this car. But you, you did mention on uh, engine weirdness. That's not a strained engine at all. There's, there's... No, it's a big block in a Corvette, which up until this generation of Corvette was just what you do. Mm. I mean, I mean that's what... honestly, I kind of want to build one of these. Um... I mean, you probably <laughs> could. Damn it, we should have done this with a shit vet. You, I mean, let's be honest, C4s are not difficult no, to get hold of. Even I, here, that you basically a version of that big block for the wagon. I'm, I'm kind of thinking we need to save that and go find a C4 chassis. I mean, my last. One the eighty four. I traded a five hundred dollar S ten even for it, so we can do it. Hey guys, <laughs> do Corvette. do you want to build me a car for when I come to the states eventually? Ever if that ever happens? No, if we're if, if we're building if we're building big block T four, it's mine. Uh, damn it, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> All right then. So should we get some scores on the doors for the Corvette? Uh, Abby, you've been very quiet. Do you want to give your score first? Oh. Four. To be honest, for the color. <laughs> that was the color mine was when I got it, and it immediately got painted. I, I will have to say to everyone who listens to this and and regularly thinks that Abby knows nothing about cars, she does. She just she does genuinely put on the dumb car person act uh, as an act because she thinks it's funny. I I will back up. She does oh, know. How dare you out me like? <laughs> she does know more than just oh I like the color. I do have to I agree like though. Color. It is it. I'm, it's a four. Oh, I, I thought she didn't like the color. Shit, I can't stand that color red on Corvettes. Uh, yeah, I have a. I definitely want like multiple Corvettes, but like I have a rule: no red, no red, no red Corvettes. This car was mine was red when I got it. Note, I immediately I've... painted it. I, I have to say no red Corvettes because I hate print. Um, it's not red uh, though. Yeah, it seems it, it's again to me. This seems bizarre. That they never made it. This seems... to be fair, these pictures came from like four different places, and I'm pretty sure all four different time. potatoes took them. Yeah. Also, I, I didn't realize that top left that top left image. I was wondering where that was taken. I'm sure that's like just some random gas station parking lot. Because we've got like kind of ugly up Tahoe. We've got a Ranger there. There's there's that's not any kind of a shit. I thought you took there. that picture, Dalen, because I could see the Tahoe in the back <laughs> of the car. <laughs> My I Tahoe's mean, not there. I will I will point out you do only live around the corner. Like didn't you work at Bowling Green? Most of my career history has been in Bowling Green. <laughs> Exactly. So uh, he almost broke the Miata on the test track that's hooked to the museum complex. Yeah, my home track is the one that's across the street from the museum and on the other side of the interstate. It's NCM Motorsports Park. That's National Corvette yeah. Museum. Oh, oh, Actually, oh! I never knew that. Here, let, let me. But yeah, no. Can I just point something out though? Behind the picture on the top left, the little like fire thing, it looks like it's got giant googly eyes attached to it. Huh? Oh, it does. Oh, oh it does. Yeah, it does. It's got googly eyes. I, I will say the thing with again to me, what I was going to say is, it seems weird to me that this seems more like the actual Corvette than the Corvette they made. This. Well, we, I mean, you look at what the C5. That was a seven liter, wasn't it? The the Z06. No, uh, no, they only had five seven cars. Uh, mm-hmm. Except unless it was a C5R, then it was a seven liter. 
Uh, I'm not going to count the C7. So is it, is it the C6 then that has the 7 liter in the... The, the C6 got the LS7 and the Z06. LS7, and the supercharged 6.2 LS9. Well, see, that's Which, kind of our introduction over here to the Corvette, because obviously, I think, I, I don't know, I, that's I can't... a great introduction to the Corvette. I can't... I will die on this post. The C6 Z06 is the best car well, I've ever driven. I can't speak I for it. you, Abby, but for me, my first real introduction to Corvettes was the uh, Top Gear American Special, where they had the Corvette, the Challenger, and the Cadillac. I was going to say it was before then. It was probably on oh, like some oh, stupid yeah, racing that, game. But yeah, that was when uh, yeah, Clarkson brought the ZR1 to that, didn't he? Mm. But again, see, so to me, I picture the Corvette as genuinely a good little sports car, but with a massive honking great V8 in the front. Uh, so I gotta say, this V4 chassis was the first step towards GM making the Corvette really. Listen, well, this yes, that's what I should mention though. I, this I was C4. their first attempt at a modern sports car. Um, the C5 and 7 or the C, C5, 6 and 7 still kind of follow the same pattern that this made um, it was just a lot more refined C5, 6 and 7 all went to front engine rear transmission cars yeah but the way they did the, the chassis and the frame is still oh yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot started, similar to the C4 this started like the space frame kind of like frame rails double wishbone front and rear this was the first time we saw the transverse leaf springs that weren't also a lower control arm yeah See, this is where I quite like the Corvette. Multi-link suspension with the, the, the Leafs. It, it's... Which, that was beef I had with Jeremy Clarkson forever. He's like, oh, it's got Leaf Springs. It's like, yes, technically, but they're just there doing the, the job of spring and sway like bar. You turn your sway bar in, yeah, your sway bar is the spring. It was a Leaf Spring transversely through double wishbone, like, suspension. Actually, I think the front was double wishbones, the seats. The C5 and up kind of got more of a multi-link situation, but it was still... Again, to me, this is why I love Corvettes, because Corvettes are just a American take on a European sports car, and I think that they've done the best of both worlds with them. I think the, they're amazing. The rear suspension you saw on the C2 and C3 Corvette was basically a copy of the Jaggy type. Hmm. But we praise the Jaggy. To, if it sucked in both places, by the way. It sucked in both places. Yeah, um, this will get me cancelled, but um, I don't actually like the Jaggy type, and I'm sorry for anyone who hates me for that. Anyway, boys. I don't, I don't think Jag's ever made anything I like, so. Yeah. Oh, no, no, XJS. I love the XJS. And the XJC. Uh, S type is the best Jag ever built. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now cutting uh, Tyler off. Um <laughs> Anyway, boys, do you want to give some scores on the doors for the Corvette? I'm sorry, but I, I think I'm going to give you a five. I'm just so disappointed GM didn't build it. Again, it just seems weird that they didn't. Um, I, I believe that engine was sold as a crate engine. Dalen, explain to me why I was about to call you Paul. Um, oh, Dalen. <laughs> Paul Darling's a lot cuter than me and drives faster. You're, you're now no, called Paul. You've been watching that terrible American lot, program. Terrible oh, yeah. Cars, anyway, Paul, what's your score? <laughs> what's your score for your own Corvette? I mean, to be honest, that you were rating on engine weirdness. That is, that's not a very exciting engine. That's, it's, it's a good engine. It's good, but again, it's not like it's, crazy. It doesn't. This doesn't seem ridiculous at all. This seems like if you said to me, "Oh, they they made this," I go, "Yeah, of course." I, I, yeah. This makes more sense I than know. '80s GM putting out a dual overhead cam <laughs> I know! This is more Corvette than the actual Corvette we got. I'm confused. And slightly horny by it? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Paul, what's your score? Like, five. <laughs> hey, this one's easy to figure out. That's, that's, that's 18. Oh, wait. 5.382. 5.382. Oh, for f- 5.382. 18.38. Hey, hey, Dalen. Dalen, have I ever told you you're a dick? Uh-huh. Right, I know I'm up next, so... Right, so... You are, sorry, love. So, I, I've been... I have. Is that? Um, so I, I happen to know that's a tiny engine, actually. Yes, actually, because I, I took a bit of a liberal view on the whole big engine thing, because I went for not big displacement, but big cylinder counts. Because this is a 2-litre V10. And uh, I think this is a, a really interesting little thing. So 
This was built by a former Jaguar engineer in the early 2000s. It's called the Connaught Type D GT, right? And this was, I think, because I couldn't... Weirdly, there's not that much information available on it, so I can't find exact dates. Everything seems to be sort of roughly just mid-2000s, what they say. But this was, uh, they, they were trying to make a hybrid sports car, because they're like, well, hybrids are coming. Bear in mind, this is when, like, the Prius and the Insight are the only real hybrids. They thought, well, hybrids are coming. We, we should build a little hybrid sports car. So this is uh, a 300 horsepower, five-speed manual with 274 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, supercharged V10 hybrid. They didn't actually have a hybrid system in it when they built it, because they planned on putting that in at some other time. Interesting people. Uh, but yeah, the the engine in it is a two liter supercharged V10. And if you look down in the bottom right, that is how they did it. It's basically like a VR10 as opposed to a V10. But what was amazing about it is it's a modular engine. So. You can get this as a um, a VR10. You can also have it as a VR5. They gave that option, or you can bolt a couple together. So there is the option of an X24 liter, uh, which is insane. It becomes a horizontally opposed situation. Then you have them both going to it's a whole thing. But yeah, really interesting little car. I thought this was. Uh, they basically they ran out of money um, in 2004 and they went bust. But and this is where I'm going to be very, very, you know, you're going to hear my national pride. They're now owned by a Welsh firm and they're building them out of Wales with Welsh workers. So they, therefore, I can claim national pride for this one. Uh, and you can buy the engines. If you want a, a, a Connaught V10, you can have one. Uh, and they are eventually planning to build the car. Whether they actually will or not, we don't know. But How much is the engine? I don't know. I'll have to look it up afterwards. Um, there's not many, because they, they are all hand-built. To my knowledge, so like they're they're like because the tolerance. I mean, you look at the size of the cylinders on that; that is tiny. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's fine as long as it's within an eighth. But it's uh, they they're, they're doing. <laughs> I don't get that joke because I'm not enough of an engineer. The machinist did. Uh I was technically a machinist, and then I got fired. More <laughs> uh, a machine operator, to be honest. Yeah, I was a machine operator. But yeah, um, <laughs> no, I am a machine operator. I will, I, I will take pride in that. But what I will say is, if you look at this bottom right for a sense of scale, that is in the engine bay of an NB MX5 because um, Drive Tribe is doing the build series. They they said they were doing this like two years ago. They put the engine in like that state and never going oh. further. Cut it, that bell housing cut out the trim here. <laughs> but yeah, that's for a sense of scale. That's how small this little V10 it it does sound. Incredible! It's a really good little engine and sound. But um, there is something on the MX-5. Yes. It's still got its coolant reservoir. <laughs> it's also got the hose wow. pipe. It's also got the uh, the heater outlet where you know the pipe burst when we we had we test drove that one. Amazing. Same that uh, people keep it in there for a reason. It's weird that, isn't it? Oh God, that was a. Yeah, I. I... I left that place when I pulled the engine like they did. <laughs> they, oh god, he said that basically he took it out to clean it and then cut. He was a bit too much of an ass to put in, so you just you plumbed it straight in. And Jack, if you're listening, that was a tit move, my friend. But it was not a wise move. But yeah, I, th I think this is a really cool little thing. I, I think in terms of like engineering, why? Because again, they're entirely modular, so you can have it as a VR5, you can have it as a VR10. I think if you really, really want to, you can have it as like a VR15 or a VR20. You can have it as a, you know, an X20. You can, they kind of design, designed it in such a way that you can just keep adding cylinders. Um, I, I think there's potential because I know you have to go full tilt. I want. <laughs> well, things. If you look at the way the Bugatti engine is, the the Veyron, the W, because it's a W16 in that, but it's not. It's it's like three. Uh, Todd, you want to help me figure out why we have a misfire on cylinder twenty-three? No, but but yeah, it, it's it's. I'll sit there and watch. It, it, <laughs> it, I'm fairly sure it does have this, um, like it's 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 three banks of VR engines. So I think they do have a, a system they they've sort of half designed for that as well, where it's like three VR tens. So you could have a VR thirty. Again, ridiculous little engine. But why would we stop at 30? I want a VR60. I want a goddamn radial engine. As I say, this is turning into a radial engine. There's no brakes. It's just nothing but cylinders. I want, okay, I, I want 
five banks of the ten uh, spinning around the crank. And, yeah. I mean, oh, feel, yes, it has to be a stationary crank. <laughs> oh, so we're going rotary with it. So the whole block spins instead of the crank. Yes. We just do that really weird uh, hey, plane hey, engine. What are, we, what are we putting this on a crop duster? <laughs> no, I still think we put it in Miata. <laughs> I mean, uh, hang on, I'll find out how much each engine costs individually. Let's have a look, shall we? Um, a lot okay. of money. Never well, mind, I'll take it back. It, I'm going to give you a score, so you can go ahead and tally this up on your board there, of uh, a negative 0.69. Why? If... I have... <laughs> it's, it's so tiny. This is big engines. It's big cylinder counts for a tiny uh, displacement. Ah, watch next week as I put 74 mini RC motors on a freaking table and call it an engine. We're fine. But you have to accept that this is a, Dude, an incredible piece of engine. It's no, It's cool. We're doing I that. Like... We're, we're putting that, 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 the table of RC engines on, on a little wagon with a belt going to one of the wheels. I have, oh, can we do that with my, uh, my amphibious? Oh yes, you, you might regret saying so, it's really boring right now. We're we're gonna call it call RC fire. Just we would like an entire pallet of those engines. Abby, I haven't I haven't missed the point. I've creatively interpreted the point. You made the title of big beefy boy. There is nothing big or beefy about this, except for yeah. maybe what the creative is eating on a Sunday night. Hey, may, maybe it's got a good personality. Don't judge it. It's also ugly. It is a very I ugly car. I don't know. I don't uh, think it's ugly. I, I'm going to point out the, des the the design wasn't done by Welsh people. That was done by an English person. I can't take national shame in the design of this car. Only the engine uh, being amazing I now. I quite like the design. That's its redeeming feature. I... Negative 12.742. <sighs> point. What was it? How can I score this seeing as you've avoided the title? But I do actually quite like the car. Of his show, you made. The show. <laughs> you picked the topic. I didn't pick the topic. I, you picked the topic, Tyler. I suggested it. I did. Yes. I, I don't remember picking this one. I I proposed it. I suggested it, and you picked it. Though. No, never mind. De well, it's not like it's my right. It, this is a collective. We we are. We, this is a commune. Uh, of com of communist. No, a commune of podcast. I, this is this is a group project. I don't. I'm. I don't roll this thing with an iron fist. You do. I, I, my good character is being insulted now. Good character. The softest the iron fist. This podcast is solely ran by whoever is currently wearing the uh, pink headphones. Ah ha ha! No I'm one. not. Yeah, so my pink headphones are at home, and I'm at Abby's. So. Uh. <laughs> Uh, podcast listeners, I want you to know that I stuck my tongue firmly out uh, when I said that. Uh, and then bit like it. Like an adult would. Yes. I am I am the most adult of adults. You're uh, actually the youngest. Oh, shit, yeah. I am, yeah. Yeah, that is the thing, yeah. Oh, God. Anyway, Abby, do you want to give me a score? Um, four. Thank you. I, I, I'm not in the black yet, but there's, you know... You can oh, give yourself right. a 10, I don't know where it's going to end up, though. I'm going to give myself a 10, because that means at least it'll give me a positive score. Oh, God, hang on a minute. I think it's pretty cute. I like it. I like the design. I think that is the redeeming feature. The reason I couldn't go any higher than a 4 on it is because you have completely missed the brief, which was your own brief. Well, I creatively interpreted it. it. But that wasn't up for, you know, debate. We're all a little bit too autistic to be creatively, you know, doing that. Stick to the rules, man. We like the rules. Well, would anyone like to know what my score is? Yeah. It is 0. 0.568. <laughs> I, th oh I think it's possible. I, I don't know why I think this. It's possible I have not got podium. It's in fact Would you like a muffin instead. Yes, I'll take a, I'll take a fourth muffin. So um, af after that crushing defeat, uh, oh. Actually, the last muffins are mine, so uh, no, you won't. This day just keeps getting worse and worse. I have no reason to live anymore. My lovely yeah, my my, my lovely Welsh engine didn't win. I don't have a muffin. 
Oh. You don't have a fixed roof for your car. Oh, I don't even have, have my. Got one you, kilo of salted nuts, though. Do you know the really sad thing is actually because my brother's car died this week. I I've lent him my car, which means I don't even have my car at the moment. Oh. You have more than one. Yeah, but the other one doesn't really work. If I try and drive the other one, the engine might eat itself alive because I have to change the water pump before I use it. I will say actually, this does. If you get her, patter, get at her. Come on, you got time. Just, just you know, do I, I, I don't have money. Being unemployed has that 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 horrible side effect. See, unemployed and dating somebody with an expensive taste. Mm-hmm. It was her birthday the other week. We went to a war museum. It was very cool. I got to see a blackbird. That is a surprisingly it small cool. plane. It was. I didn't. I'm surprised how small the blackbird actually is. Off topic. Plane chat. Yay. <laughs> Anyway, so after my crushing defeat, um, along with because I, I decided to bury my nation in in this, and I'm sorry, Wales. I, I will bring us back up at some point. Uh, should we move on to Abby's car? Yay! Abby, what are we looking at? The Beast of Turin is its like nickname, but the Fiat S76 or S76, whatever they they want to go with. I've actually seen this car in real life three times. I I've seen it, I've seen it once, and that was with you. Yeah, I've seen it three times. Uh, the second time, I got a little bit too close and nearly lost an eyebrow, but it's all good. It is from 1911. Given its name, it beats the Turin, and it's a fit. It's it's Italian. Uh, it was built to basically beat the land speed record, which was set by the Blitzen Benz. So it's built to go fast in a straight line. Um, it does really well at Goodwood every year. People just really enjoy it because it spits flames. Um, as you can see on the original one, uh, the black and white picture, there there is some sort of effort to avoid the flames. On, there would have still been flames, just they're directed like down. Yeah, they were directed, you know, not at people's faces. They decided they didn't need that on the second one, yeah. clearly. They decided, you know what we need? We're going to take this to Goodwood, and there'll be people getting right up close to this car, like really close, like crowds of people. You, you know you know what? No directing them flames straight to the face. So it's great. Um, but yeah, it's huge. Like... Mm. You look at the men in the in like the black and white picture stood next to it. It is big. Like the reason it was called the Beast of Turin is because it's fucking huge. Do you, do you have um, the uh, engine displacement size? I Cause... do. I was getting to that. So the engine displacement it is. Sorry, I've got them written down. Bear with me. Uh, Twenty-eight point four litre. Do you know how many cylinders it has, yeah, by the way? A baby. Do you, know how many, do, you, do you know how many it's cylinders got... that's separated between? Four. Any yeah. nine four cylinder engine yep. <laughs> produces a measly 290 horsepower. It's actually the, the least powerful engine on here and also the biggest engine fitted to any car yeah. ever. It's, yeah. uh. it's huge, but the interesting thing about it is they made two. The original one that did the land speed record, they don't really know what's happened to it. Cause uh, so, one, sorry, I, I, I do actually know what happened to it. Fiat, Fiat took it apart. Fiat took it back and they, they disassembled yeah, it, for, took it apart. for the war the effort. The second one was sold to a Russian, and that is the one that's been reconditioned and made what this is. But the when the guy who owns it now, the English bloke, can't remember his name, it's very English name. Uh, he bought it to, you know, restore. He got the engine from Fiat to put in it. But the Italians in 2019 were like, eh, no, we kind of need that for a history display. I think there's an ongoing battle still about who owns it rightfully, but it's still in the car and he's still using it. So, you know, good for him. But I think the Italians want it back and I don't think he wants to give it back to them. And it's just a bit mental. Like... The amount of people who tried to drive it to get a land speed record in it and just chickened out because it was so nutty. It was eventually, like, the land speed record was eventually done by an American driver called Arthur DeRay, D-U-R-A-Y, in 2009. 
in December in 1930 in Ostend in Belgium. I've been to Ostend in Belgium. Lovely beach. Sorry. Did, not very straight. Did it take them 19 years to get someone to drive it? Yeah. And it, it was originally... Like, they, they tried it a few different times in, you know, various different places like Brooklands and a beach in Weybridge. But what, they didn't really want to go above 90 mile an hour. And, yeah, eventually the Russian guy hired the American and he got it up to 132 mile an hour, which beat the Blitz and Benz. But it wasn't official because they didn't do it within an hour. So it was kind of officially, not officially, the world's fastest car for a little while. And then, you know, World War One happened and, uh, yeah, they, they started making basically the same engine um, and putting it in an aeroplane. The only difference was the sparks plugs, which the car one had two and the... Oh, hang on a minute. Whoa, whoa. Three. Hang on a minute. Whoa. Are you saying this is a twin spark? Technically speaking, it is a twin spark. Boys, it's officially part of the brand. I can claim it. Yeah. Technically speaking, possibly a very early twin spark, but obviously you you can't really put that in your alpha. I could try. It's a bit. It's a bit big. Do you know one of my my but, favorite things about this, by the way, is it has a four speed gearbox and yet it is still chain driven. Yeah, it's chain driven. I think the only part of this that sketches me out is that when that chain comes apart at speed, you're going to lose your left arm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also, well, one of my favorite things That's is your head, maybe. So you know, you see how thin the tires are. If you ever see the videos of this at Goodwood, it does not go around a corner at all. Like even at low speeds, it kicks it the drips. ass out. Yeah, it just keeps yeah. sliding even at low speeds. It is. This has got some stupid amount of torque. It's, it's also you have to like crank it to turn it so it's got one of the cranks at the front to turn it over to get it started oh which is quite cool to watch for a 20 28 point yeah. what cylinder end oh man that just don't break your fingers that takes your arm off yeah <laughs> that's good it, it, <laughs> take the whole half your, half your body away probably what, like, i don't know if I you want to them. edit in the video that i've got from when I, I saw it don't know the how to time. do that i'll try the noise it makes is amazing because obviously it's flaming, and every time it flame the, the flames go, it pops. All right. It's just sort of like all right, if, vibrating everything if, around. If it. we like, all it go quiet, feel it. If we all go quiet for like two seconds, Alex in editing. I know I've put a lot on you this edit episode, but can you edit in that video? <laughs> See if I can, you know, play it just so that people could hear the... the That's all right. I'll, 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 I'll do fancy editing and I'll put it in post. <laughs> Alex in editing, okay. did you do that? Well, thank you very much or up yours, depending on what your answer was. Yeah. There we go. If it doesn't kill you by, like, flaming your face off, the vibrations of it going past will probably, like, restart your heart and put it into a different rhythm because so... it is just humongous, loud, aggressive, and just... Everything that a giant engine in a ridiculous car that's Italian and built to beat the Germans and yeah. It's one of it's, the few cars that is simultaneously louder and has less exhaust than the MR2 at the moment. Yeah. I'd say they're, they're rivaling each other. You just need flames. i got to say, what are the vibrations? What's the... I mean, mine does technically spit flames, just only under the bonnet. Um, but what I will say is, what's the vibrations in this got to do to your teeth? Like... That's that's got to. Be... I've only ever seen elderly people driving it. So... <laughs> ah, dentures. So you can take them out beforehand. Then, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they, you know, take the dentures out prior to the hill climb or like after, but you know, it's it's a bit of a nutty, nutty car. I do. I do really like it. I wonder what the RPMs are like on it because I can't imagine it revs particularly high with that big of an engine. I don't know. No. No, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like six hundred RPM or something. Uh, I did have it. Well, somewhere. it's used for aircraft, but they could be using gear reduction when they go to drive it. But I'd assume at least as a thousand. Hmm. I love the fact they used it in a car first and went, "Ooh, we could use this in planes afterwards." It's that big. I think it was actually a plane they used it in. I, I know. I'm gonna correct myself here. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was 
two of these on like a bomber, I think it was. Mm. But in nine... oh. oh, interesting fact. The engine is basically the size of four big block Chrysler 440 Magnum V8s in one car. That's that is a... it is ridiculous. This is everything nutty. I, w I will point out this is my original choice, and a little miss. You missed your own brief. I, g I let you have this. I was like, why didn't you do that? Because I've got another idea that, you know, you, I, I was trying to I be was nice. I going to do a ship. Yeah, well, a ship Apparently, doesn't count. A ship cheating. is cheating. She wanted to use a, a, a 106,000 horsepower ship. And I was like, you know what? That's cheating. I, I, I feel like you two would agree Wait, with me on that I one. I could have used a container ship for this. No, no yeah, one can I'm use ships for this. To. No one can use ships. No, we're not. No, no. I'm having a meltdown. No. No. <laughs> oh, so no container it's ships. If you bend the rules. But, you, know. you know what? Fine. I do rule this place with a soft iron fist. Do not make me get the cat ear headphones out. Oh, you'd have to go home for that. And I'm not driving you. Good luck getting yeah. home with the train drives. <laughs> right, you know what? Dalen, at least me and you don't have domestics. Can, can I stay married to you and not Abby now? <laughs> you can go, you can leave any time you RPM want. That car is 1,000 RPM. Ah. Oh. That, oh, that, oh, God. Uh, in fourth gear at 70 miles an hour, it's turning 300 RPM. What is it idle wow. at? 12? <laughs> Seven. How many RPMs? You're a lot for me to now figure out what the idle RPM of it is. What is this oh, idle at? Seven. Um, you say that, but like the Maersk container ships, um, 108 RPM is max on those. Yeah, but in fairness, that you know, an RPM is that you know, a revolution is is a lot. thousand horsepower two stroke. Mm. Thing weighs like 2,200 tons. Yeah. Much more than that, and it might just drop the crankshaft through the bottom. Hey, yeah, if we were doing inappropriate things that weren't cars, I would have just done the oh, train master. There you go. I've got... So, it... Top RPM is 1,400. But it doesn't say idling. Well, that's that's pointless. I don't want to work that out. Damn, don't now we have contributing math. sources. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there are two cars, and both of them were built by the Italians. Yes. This one's a little less sketchy if we take it higher. <laughs> but, yeah, it's technically a twin spark. I've seen it in real life. Nearly lost my left eyebrow. I love Probably it. Has, it's like, nothing. Two Honestly, I've got to give this a 10 because it is the most ridiculous. And I've again, I've seen it in real life and it is insane. Um, and it is factually the biggest uh, engine ever put on four wheels. So there's that as well. Yeah. This is a very uh, typical pre-war thing where you just go, we need to go fast. What do we do? Make it bigger. And, uh, after the war, we kind of went, ooh, aerodynamics? That's a thing. Well, it's like pre-World War One. So I suppose mm. they did the same with like World War Two. They're like, ooh, what do we do? Make it bigger. This is one of the things that is, is great when you look at um, post-World War Two like land speed stuff. A lot of it is just like, hey, we took this fuel tank off a jet and stuck wheels on it. It's great. It goes fast now. Yes, scores. Um, I don't. I don't want to score it just yet. I want to hear what everyone else says. I'm, I'm giving it a ten. Uh, nine point eight eight three five four. I heard ten from Dalen. I'd like yeah, to point out that I could, I could right now choose violence and give you a one and guarantee my win, but I'm not mean, so <laughs> that's pretty fucking titties. I'll, I'll give it a 9.69. Oh, um, I forget that I, I do this podcast it. with imbeciles. I don't know what to give it because, yeah, I am still pretty pissed about the eyebrow sitch, but, you know. <laughs> right. I can't even forgive them for that, but at the same point, it's still pretty cool. Like, you, you could start the car up and, you know, roast a marshmallow. Like, not many cars you can do that with. Well, come on, you need to give us a score. I'm going to go with a nine. Right, now I've got... With a nine. Thanks to two certain yanks. <sighs> Ten plus... It's a good job I've got to calculate it out on my phone, but Dale and Master, what was it, 8834? You couldn't even make sure a decimal enough. that was easy for me to add up. I, I forgot, I don't remember what the decimals were. 9.8364? No, it was 88354. 
Oh, I mean, you know what? I've, I've put it down as 88. Point, I've put it down as 8834, and you're going to suck my nuts about it, all right? Three. On the subject of your nuts, I have opened the bag. They are very tasty. Oh, but you fucking, I'm starving in here, and you're eating the, the bag of the massive, comically big nut, bag of nuts. Disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, would we all like to know who was winning, who was losing? I'm pretty certain yes. there's one. Well, uh, in last place. With 0.568, because apparently we decided minus points are something we can do now. Thanks again, Americans. Is me with the Con Connaught. So I I, I, I I do not score well this week. Uh, Dalen, you're in third place uh, with the 18.382 on the Corvette. Now, the question is, did the Cadillac V16 or the Fiat S76... Uh, take the title uh, and in second place with a grand score of 32 we have Tyler with the Cadillac which means the fear first of the losers baby I got this which means, podium. which means which means Abby the Abby finally back you know officially now one of the the main hosts uh, and finally actually on the episode where she is a main host um, clearing house with 38 point Something. Five, seven, three, four. Thank you, Dale and Tyler. We have the Fiat. So there, there's our championship for today. Uh, at some point, I think we have to we have to start like a series two where we actually like make note of the points and do like a series championship. Um, I'm why not. We, why don't we just take average? Like we can go back and take our finishing positions. Because it's, we've changed the fucking lineup like eighteen times. We can't. That doesn't matter. That helps. I think just by sheer number of times I bother to show up, I'm going to be doing pretty good. Are we including the um, original original members? Or well, we no, because we, we didn't we didn't we didn't have scores until we brought on uh, Nomadic Millennial. We have to bring Jake back at some point. He wants to do another episode, and he, that was a good laugh. We'll have to bring him back on at some point. And you do realise, Alex, you're not actually a millennial. No, that was his. Th that's his channel. I know, not but me. you didn't know that until a couple of weeks ago. You Shh. thought you were a millennial. I didn't think that. I just said I'm a. I don't know what. I'm the in between zone. These kids beyond they damn. These kids beyond them damn phones. Oh yeah, because because we haven't got access to Word anymore. Um, I. This is the end. Scott Card again. Um, the end, didn't it? Thank thank you all for 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 watching again. Um, uh, Tyler needs to rush off to do things. So um. Your mums. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> anyway, so don't forget to put it in the fridge. Thank you very much for watching. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, do we? Is, is the next episode we're doing technicals, or do we? Are we not decided yet? I don't think we're doing technicals next. Now you already said it. Oh, okay. okay. I guess we're doing technicals. I, I think right, we, we need to do trains before we do ships because we've been excited about doing trains for a lot longer. And what about I, planes? That is planes, awesome. I'm excited trains about all three of these, bills. but um, if, tanks. We need I, to do tanks. I call the B1R if we're doing planes. Uh, I, I, I call... Um, oh, I know why you're picking the B1R. You child. Yep. You <laughs> child. It's also a fucking badass plane. Um, anyway, so... Thank you. That is, actually, that's not a concept plane. Technically, missed... technically, I don't yeah, think the B1R ever actually exists yet. They just, just talked about period it. Of time. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to call it here. So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I've just realised I haven't yet put the Halloween episode up on uh, on Spotify. So, darling, if you could remind me that while I'm eating the big bag of nuts. Not a euphemism. We just generally have a one kilo bag of nuts. Let's uh, I don't know we, what time you're listening to this too, but thank you very much for watching. Good night, good evening, good morning. I always get the order wrong. And feel free to donate to Patreon or PayPal so that Alex can buy more giant bags of... Uh, no, right, let's be, honest, let's be clear. All the money that comes to the Patreon goes exclusively to my drug habits. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>